வெல்கம் பேக் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீக் வி லுக் அட் a technique of counting called uh, the principle of inclusion and exclusion we saw several applications of this method now uh, we want to look at uh, the same uh, technique maybe with a slightly different view point and the idea is to generalize this even further so uh, you know before uh, going further let us look at uh what is called inversion formula <clears throat> so uh, what is an inversion formula so suppose uh, you are given a function g that is expressed in terms of uh, let's say some other function uh, f now uh, an inversion formula is uh, a formula that computes uh, the function f in terms of g so you are given a formula g in terms of f now uh, you want to find out what is f in terms of g so this is an inversion formula right so let us look at a very basic example to begin with suppose you look at the say uh, you know some uh, g of x is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n f of i so this is given to you for every natural number n you have this uh, defined okay so g is defined for every natural number n and it is summation i is equal to 1 to n f of i where f is some function now the question is that can you recover f uh, so f uh, given g right if you if you know g can you recover f so uh, this is something uh, you must uh, be uh, pretty Uh, convinced that you can find it very easily to think about for, uh, think about it for a minute uh, you can uh, see that uh, you know we can uh, write f in terms of g as follows so f of 1 uh, is g of 1 of course from this summation it is very clear then uh, f of n can be written as g of n minus g of n minus 1 okay? this is also something that you can verify immediately from the previous uh, definition of uh, g in terms of f so uh, but this is uh, slightly more than that you know you can if you uh, if you remember your calculus you can say that this is a discrete analog of the fundamental theorem of calculus right? that is what we say in calculus of right? fundamental theorem of calculus says expresses the uh, you know one function in terms of the difference of the other at the end point right so uh one can try to prove uh, in fact the you know the non discrete version also using uh, this kind of uh, an approach but uh, it it takes a little bit of work but it's possible i believe now uh, an example uh, one more example let us look at suppose uh, s is a set of properties that elements of some given set let's say a may or uh, may not possess okay so you, you have a set a big set a of sets several sets maybe right or uh, some other elements whatever but now uh, you collect some uh, properties that some of the elements of this set might have or might not have so you take all these properties and say that okay you know these elements have this property these elements have this property you know these elements have this property and that property like whatever so uh, you have the collection of properties that each element may or may not have then <clears throat> suppose uh, you know some function f counts so suppose you are given uh, given a, a subset of s let's say t then f of t counts the number of elements in a that has uh, exactly the properties that is described in t right so the properties t is a subset of s so t describes certain properties now f of t counts 
those elements that has exactly these properties and nothing else. So the other properties, this does not have, right? Only these properties it have. Precisely these properties. So whatever that number is, that is counted by F. Now, so uh, yeah, so when I say exactly count, uh, counting exactly, I mean is that they fail to have properties in S minus T because you know S is the set of all properties that we are considering, and uh, F T counts only those precisely in T. Now, G of T, let us say, counts the number of elements in A that has at least all the properties in T, right? So G basically counts those properties where, you know, take take uh, those elements. So you take all, all those elements where these elements have all the properties in T. That is given, but it can have other properties. We don't care about that. But it should have all the properties in T. So now uh, one can immediately see that uh, G of T can be expressed in terms of f very easily, right? So you take, you know, all supersets of t, right? And then say that uh, sum over all this f, and that will give you g, right? Because f of x counts all those, uh, you know, so for, for the set x, all those having precisely the properties x, and now g of t is basically now summation over all x, which is a you know, super set of t, f of x, which means that it will have all the properties, you know, all the elements having properties in t and more. Right? So that is what g of t is. So g of t can be expressed as summation f of x, where x is uh, containing t. Now, what the uh, principle of inclusion exclusion says is that you can find the inverse that is you can express now f in terms of g also right? so if you, if you recall the principle of inclusion exclusion you know what the way we used it and think about uh, you know exactly what we were doing that we were expressing uh, you know expressing so we wanted to find uh, some uh, you know the number of elements having precisely some property and then we said that okay we count those which has at least these many properties and then we use that to get a formula for uh, the properties that uh, is precisely in this given set right so uh, if you are not convinced go back and think about it look at some example and see whether it is precisely the same thing okay so what uh, principle of inclusion exclusion states is the following that f of t is equal to summation over all uh, uh, x containing t minus 1 raised to cardinality of x minus t g of x. Now we did not state it precisely in this form but you can see some similarity and if you if you work out the details you can uh, you can uh, verify that this indeed uh, this indeed uh, uh, expresses the principle of inclusion and exclusion okay so we will we will come back to it again but uh, for the time being uh, i want you to uh, go through this uh, you know this version uh, or this uh, point of view and then uh, uh, see whether uh, it matches with this you know this uh, expression matches with the uh, way we have defined the principle of inclusion and exclusion so uh, think about this and uh, also think about this uh, uh, way of thinking that uh, uh, you know as two functions f and g instead of the way we presented earlier okay. so and, and and you know what we are doing is actually a kind of inversion okay. so <clears throat> once you think about it it will be uh, very clear then now i want to look at this also in uh, in in a different viewpoint so <clears throat> you know the the classical way or or not classical not just the classical the standard way or the more popular way 
of introducing uh, principle of inclusion and exclusion is uh, by you know by looking at uh, the small examples like you know you have uh, two sets or three sets then you take uh, you know to, to count what you are doing is that okay you count the, you know count the union uh, you take the you know uh, union and then you subtract uh, you know the intersection of pairs and then you again go back and then you know uh, add the things that we have subtracted too many times right so this way uh, and then try to generalize that into a formula right? this is what we did uh, and when we try to prove uh, this from uh, you know uh, the uh, the basics and uh, the the you know i mean you know of course it is it, it is the way probably you know the uh, the technique evolved also mm. but then you know uh, this uh, technique once you see it in terms of uh, you know uh, as an inversion you know you see something more to it and then you can realize that it's actually a very minor theorem from linear algebra. So inclusion exclusion principle is just a small theorem in linear algebra, and uh, you know it, it became so uh, important because of its wide variety of uh, applications, wide applicability, right? And so let us see uh, how this is a theorem in linear algebra. So, <clears throat> so here is the theorem. Let uh, S be an n element set and uh, V be a vector space of uh, dimension 2 raised to n uh, of uh, functions that go uh, from or that maps uh, the elements of the power set of S, right, which is if S has n elements, then power set of S has 2 raised to n elements uh, to R. It's basically, it's a real valued vector space over. The power set. Now, look at uh, a linear transformation phi that maps uh, v to v uh, the following way: that phi of f of t, right? So f is already a function. Now, uh, phi of f of t is uh, summation over all uh, x containing t f of x. Okay. So this is the way uh, the linear transformation works. For uh, for any given uh, t subset of s, right? so given a t subset of s, f of t. So because you know uh, the you know the the domain of f is uh, you know the you know the subsets of uh, s. So therefore, t subset of s means that you know, the function is defined for that, and uh, therefore uh, you know uh, this is a, a, a well-defined linear transformation. Now. If, uh, if you define uh, the linear transformation this way, the theorem states that uh, its inverse exists, phi inverse, and the inverse can be given by the following. Okay? So phi inverse of f of t again is equal to summation over all x containing t minus 1 raised to modulus of x minus t f of x, where t is any subset of x. For every subset of s, you have this. So again, uh, you know, complete description of uh, phi inverse. So, uh, this uh, theorem is precisely what, uh, you know, the inclusion exclusion uh, principle is uh, saying. Uh, if you, you know, if you just uh, compare it with the previous statement, you can see immediately why this is the same statement. And uh, let's prove this. So, the proof is by assuming that, okay, if there is an inverse, uh, you know, uh, they said that this is the inverse. So let us take this as some function. Let's say psi. Psi max from a to v is psi of f of t is equal to summation x containing t minus 1 raised to mod x minus t f of x. So this is the definition of psi. Now we show that psi is uh, the inverse of phi by uh, multiplying them together and seeing that, you know, it returns identity, right? So let us say that what is uh, phi psi of f of t. Okay. So phi psi of f of t is uh, by uh, you know the definition the summation x containing t minus 1 raised to mod x minus t phi f of x. Now phi f of x is summation z containing x f of z 
So therefore, uh, you get this double summation. Now, uh, you know, so you take this and then uh, you realize that, okay, so X is containing T and Z is containing X. So therefore, I can write as summation over all Z containing T. And uh, summation uh, Z containing X containing T minus 1 raised to mod X minus T. Now, this part is uh, independent of, uh, you know, the choice of uh, the Z. So therefore, I can compute it. And uh, what is that? Uh, for computing that, I put m is equal to modulus of uh, z minus t or cardinality of z minus t, which is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, required to you know write it as you know in a in the counting in a different way. So let us look at what is the you know the internal bracket here sums to. Right? So that sums to summation uh, you know, z containing x containing t minus one raised to mod x minus t. Uh, so look at you know look at uh, the uh, x in terms of you know like so so it, x can vary from but t to z right so when x is equal to t you will get zero and uh, when x is equal to z we will get m right so now we count according to the cardinality of the set that we are considering. So now we can say that this is equal to or cardinality of x minus t. Then uh, we can say that this is summation i is equal to 0 to m. m choose i because precisely m choose i ways to select uh, you know an i element uh, uh, set uh, in this case and minus 1 raised to i. And uh, this is equal to what is this by using binomial theorem. One can see that uh, this will be precisely. Uh, 1 when m is equal to 0 only and every other cases it is going to be uh, to be 0 okay so when m is equal to 0 this will be uh, the summation will be 1 and when uh, you know m is different from 0 the summation will be 0 because this is basically 1 minus 1 whole raised to m so therefore uh, we get uh, this as uh, the Kronecker delta delta 0 m now, so the internal part is chronicle, uh, chronicle delta, delta 0 m. So now look at what happens here, right? So when, when it is precisely uh, non-zero, that is when m is equal to 0, right? So when m is equal to 0, this is non-zero. So therefore, the only term that surveys is m is equal to 0. So what is m is equal to 0? That is z is equal to t. So therefore, in the summation, the only term that remains is uh, or survives is f of t and everything else uh, disappears. Uh, and in, in that case, you know, the, uh, the, the summation here is precisely 1. So therefore, uh, we get f of t so on the right hand side. So therefore, phi uh, psi f of t is equal to f of t, which means that phi psi is the identity or, or uh, psi is the inverse of phi. So that proves the theorem, right? So it's a very simple proof. And uh, this is a result from linear algebra. And uh, you see that this statement is precisely our uh, statement of the principle of inclusion and exclusion, right? So you can express uh, f in terms of g. So, so given, uh, you know, given a function g, which is in terms of the, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, function f which counts exactly the properties in subsets uh, then you can express uh, you know f in terms of g also 